So here we go, let's talk about marker genes. So marker genes are genes in the plasmid. So these are plasmid genes. for antibiotic resistance. What do we use them for? They enable identification of bacteria containing these recombinant plasmids. So bacteria are great and they will take up plasmids out of solution. So when you've got your test tube of recombinant plasmids at the end of your um, initial recombinant DNA making you stuff with the restriction endonucleases and ligases, then they will obligingly just take them up out of solution. And then when they replicate, because they replicate uh, asexually, then the bacteria that have taken up the plasmids will also obligingly replicate the plasmids as well, and that's the principle. So what about these marker genes? So remember that I said in the first video that plasmids have got genes for antibiotic resistance on. When you put your two test tubes together of the uh, plasmids that you've recombined and your bacteria, some of those bacteria won't take up the plasmids, just, uh, you know, they're not in the mood. They don't want one. Not today, thanks. Um, so only some of the bacteria will actually take these plasmids up. Now, you're the only interested in the ones that have got the plasmids in because they're the ones that have got your gene for your protein that you want the bacteria to make. So if we use plasmids that have got genes for antibiotic resistance, the basic principle is that if you then grow the bacteria on a plate with antibiotic on it, then the ones that have got the resistance gene will survive and make a colony. So these are the ones, the blue gene in. These make a colony because they're not affected or survive the antibiotic. And that's great then, you can identify them, you can then, you know, take them off the plate and put them into a culture uh, grow them up, get as many as you want, and they've all got the plasmid in. So far, so good. So that's the sort of basic principle of, anti of using antibiotic resistant markers. But obviously, it is a little bit more complicated than that. So we have a scenario where, of course, the ligase only just joins together sticky ends and it doesn't really mind what sticky ends it joins together and presumably uh, you will get little uh, blue circles of your your gene um, that are not acting like plasmids. So <coughs> effectively what you get at the end of your genetic engineering process is you get um, three sorts of bacteria. You get ones with no plasmids. So these are these green ones that are um, on this diagram. So they don't have any any plasmids at all and they they were coloured green on this on this plate here. Then you get ones that have plasmids, but at this cutting stage, when you add the ligase in, they've just joined back up together. And so these are bacteria that have plasmids, but they've just been joined back together. 
so they've still got antibiotic resistance. And then you've got the ones that you really want. So these have unaltered plasmids in them. And finally you've got the ones that you want. The ones where you've opened it up It's still got your gene for antibiotic resistance and it's also got the gene that you've put into it. Ooh, that's not very good contrast, is it? Use a darker blue pen. So these are the ones that contain the recombinant plasmids. And so that makes it a whole lot more complicated because obviously anything with a plasmid in with this antibiotic resistance gene is going to survive but some of these are not containing the protein making gene that you want. So for that reason we need to use a technique called replicating um, which is always a bit of an issue so I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. I'm going to use a past question <coughs> to illustrate this. So. These are two plasmids, they've been through this process, so they have been cut up with restriction endonucleases and they have been rejoined with DNA ligases. And this time we're using um, two resistance genes. We're using a resistance gene for an antibiotic called ampicillin, I'm going to colour that in red, and the other resistance gene that's on the plasmid is a tetracycline resistance gene, I'm just going to colour that in blue. So now we've got two resistance genes to go at, and the basic principle of the sort of genetic engineering process is to disrupt one of these genes. So in this case, where they've made the cut, so where the DNA um, ligase is cut, is here. Sorry, the DNA, the restriction endonuclease. It's made a cut there. Now that happens to be right in the middle of our tetracycline resistance gene which now won't code because it can't be read from end to end for tetracycline resistance. Notice that we haven't cut into the ampicillin resistant gene so that one is still intact. So that's lovely. And of course we've then got our gene of interest, the one that we're trying to splice, that we're splicing in and the DNA ligase in some of these plasmids has managed to splice in our gene of interest, which in this case, on this question, was the human gene for blood clotting. So this is our uh, foreign gene, if you like. And we can use that to identify our three types of bacteria. So our three types of bacteria were, if you remember, ones with no plasmids, ones with unaltered plasmids, and ones with recombinant plasmids. So, if we look now at our two antibiotics, so we've got AMP, ampicillin, and we've got TET for tetracycline. Now obviously, our poor 
bacteria that didn't bother to take up a plasmid are now regretting it heartily because if you grow those bacteria on an ampicillin plate they die and if you grow them on a tetracycline plate they die. However, our unaltered bacteria, the ones that have taken up unaltered plasmids are resistant, they still have their ampicillin, they survive on ampicillin and they survive on tetracycline. Whereas the ones that are recombinant, we've disrupted that tetracycline gene, they die on tetracycline, but they've still got their ampicillin resistant gene, so they survive on ampicillin. And you think, well that's not very helpful because you know, we can identify the ones that survive on both, but what about identifying this one where it dies on a tetracycline plate? So we have to do <coughs> a technique called replica plating. So this diagram over here represents replica plating. This is effectively making a copy of a plate. So you get all of your bacteria and you plate them out on agar and live bacteria make little circular colonies. So these are all the bacteria that are alive and you have to do other things and when we do component one microbiology you'll realise you have to do dilutions to get them to spread out enough so that one bacteria makes one colony. So we've got six live bacteria <coughs> on this plate and each one has given rise to a colony. And then you need to copy those colonies so they kind of get a little velvety pad that picks up some so if you just look back at this picture, some of these sorts of bacteria from the top of the colony and then if you press it onto a new agar plate those individual bacteria will make a colony so you can copy a plate across. So we put our pad on, we press it on this one and uh, this agar has got ampicillin in it so this is our, this is our red plate. And you can see here that colony number one has survived the ampicillin and grown on it. Colony number two has survived the ampicillin. Colony number three has survived the ampicillin. And colony number six has survived the ampicillin. So that tells us that the red plate has got our bacteria with plasmids in. And these two have not survived the antibiotic. So these are the ones with no plasmids in whatsoever. So four of five, no plasmids. And colonies, one, two, three and six all have plasmids and grow as they contain the gene. For ampicillin resistance But we don't know whether they're unaltered plasmids or altered plasmids. All we can say is, yep, they've got a plasmid. <coughs> so we copy the plate again. And you can either copy it from this one or from that one. It doesn't it really matter. And this time we put our tetracycline antibiotic in. And here we can see that colonies 1 and 3 have survived. And colonies 2 and 6 that we were expecting to be there and there have died. So what does that plate tell us? What that plate tell us, tells us is that 
Colonies one and three survive. They have an unaltered oh can't spell from oh I've got a completely back to front unaltered tetracycline resistance gene. And therefore, do not have our gene of interest or human blood clotting gene. So, the two colonies that have died are these two here and these ones here. These are the ones, so colonies two and six do have plasmids with our gene of interest. As they're not resistant to tetracycline. gene is disrupted. So now we know which ones they are and I know you're thinking oh wow but they're dead. Well they're dead on that plate but they're not dead on that plate and they're not dead on that plate either. So we've still got some colonies that we can lift off and then grow. So I'm hoping that that kind of sorts out the issue of marker genes for you.